Welcome back to Foxy TV episode 112. This episode is all about accessories in home staging. How we select the accessories for the home, where we place them within the home and why we place them there. And to do so, we are going to take you along to two jobs to show you the process as it happens. For the first job, we are heading south to Mermaid Waters on the Gold Coast. So we're just finished up in Mermaid Waters today. It's Monday's beautiful, beautiful day outside. Um, so we've just finishing up. This is a three bed, uh, one living home with a granny flat attached. So what we wanted to talk about today um, and the focus of Foxy TV is about our selection process. So we've spoken about furniture and all that sort of stuff before. And I've, I guess I've given you an overview of the bedding, but I haven't really spoken about how we pull together all of our accessories and what we call fluff. So for us, we call it fluff because it's a very familiar term to most people. I'm not pompous about it. We are just bringing accessories and stuff in. It's everything that nobody has at home. It's stuff that we can't live with because it makes it impractical. So that's what I'm talking about today. So why have I chosen the elements in this property? Like why have I got this particular setting on the dining table? Why have I got what I have in the, the granny flat and how does it tie together with what's in, in the, the main living area? So if we walk through, what has set the tone for how I've styled this property is this wallpaper. So we've got this retro glam wallpaper, yellow and silver, with a uh, yellow and kind of a champagne gold, actually, I should call it. And then you've got these pendants, these very glam pendants. So that, for me, has set the tone. We're, at, we're in the Gold Coast, so we could have gone for a, a, Cam a Hamptons or a coastal feel, um, and that's what a lot of the style properties are around here, but that just does not suit the fixtures that we have in the home. So we always style, as I've said, to um, really emphasize the elements of the, the features of the home. So if I come and force something in here, like Hamptons, which is white and blue, or if I go for natural and wicker, it doesn't suit the existing fixtures. So I want this to stand out, and I want it to be the reason that somebody remembers this home when they, when they go home after, on a Saturday. So I've brought in uh, the champagne paint gold elements throughout the rest of the styling. I've gone with yellow pops. I don't style with lots of yellow. The reason I don't style with lots of yellow is when a photographer comes in, a real estate photographer, comes and takes all their photos and then they do their post processing, yellow stands out. It gets blurred edges, it doesn't um, process as nicely and it doesn't look natural. Whereas the other colours, and you'll notice I haven't gone for yellow, I've gone for mustard because the earthy colours process better compared to the brighter colours. So we've gone with pinks and yellows. You will have seen if you followed us for a while that we do, we have done pink and yellow before. Um, and this for me, I've gone with a retro glam feel. So ties in with the artwork, ties in with wallpaper, and that ties in with the main living section. So that is the feel, the colour, um, and the style that I've gone for. So then how do I make the accessories work? So focus on our dining table. And you can see I've got all of, all of those colours that I've just spoken about. We've got the mustard, we've got the, the pink, the earthy pink, combined with <clears throat> something. This one's a little bit more coastal than it is retro or glam, but it suits this style beautifully. We've got the mustard little pops. I don't actually know what these, I'm sure these have a name. These little pom-poms, they're on there. They all match in together. Then if you, um, I don't know, zoom out to the kitchen, so you can see I've got the greenery, all the eye line. It's actually, everything focuses on that wallpaper because I want it to stand out. So then if you stand at the front door, Cody, and then pan out, so you can see I've got that colour consistently throughout. So we've got the pink armchairs, which then tie in with the pink on our cushions, which then ties in with the pink on the, the coffee table. And you can't go overwhelmingly pink. So we've got very subtle pink in the, the floor rug as well. If I do more pink than this, it's gonna to be too girly, way too feminine. A man will walk in here and they, they won't be able to see past the retro gland, they'll just see girly. So it still needs to appeal to both sides of the market, because um, again, we're not about polarizing. However, the wallpaper will do that on its own. What I'm trying to do is make sure that the rest of the property appeals to as many people as we can. So I've got the whites, the pinks, the mustards, and then that flows. So then we come outside, We've got the pinks over on the outdoor. And then if we go down to the other, um, the other living area, you'll see we've got pinks down there too. But you can see all of these elements, the same colors throughout. So rules when it comes to accessory selection. 
We need height. We need odd numbers, so two, four, five. And then we need different textures for different elements of interest so that you can, so this pot, for example, I'm not gonna go put greenery in here. It's gonna be far too high. This pot works on its own. So that's why I've gone with very simple, everything else with it. This entire spread is simple because the beautiful outdoor lounge that it's with is what I want the feature to be on. But also I don't wanna take anything away from out there. So I want the view to go straight out to the pool. So that's why we've gone with those accessories. But we'll go back to warehouse and we'll do selections for another property and you'll see how when we go for retro glam versus a modern contemporary grey home, how it's all different and how it combines together. So that was the first job which was done on Monday this week. We're now heading to the warehouse on Tuesday where Phoebe was selecting accessories for a job which took place on Wednesday. What we're going to do is have Phoebe describe the different accessories she's selecting for each setting. And then I'll show you some photos and videos once the install was complete and the accessories were all in their rightful place. Hey guys, so we are back at the warehouse. We did the install yesterday out in Mermaid Waters and um, it was very glam, very pink. So now we're gonna switch to more of a moodier house. This is more greys. We've gone for a mix of greys and blues. The reason we've done that, you'll notice when we do the install, we've got a lot of blue, we've got blue sofa. We're trying to balance out the renovation of this property is actually a grey colour palette. The existing home is still a beige colour palette. So um, you would have heard normally we don't mix those two together if you've been following us for a long time. But we're, with the styling, the idea is to make sure that it's seamlessly blended together. So it doesn't matter what the colour palette is upstairs versus downstairs. When you're walking through, that's not what you notice. You still feel seamlessly integrated throughout the entire property. We want it to flow. So that's the whole purpose of the styling. Now, that's not why we're focusing on in Foxy TV this week. What we're focusing on is how do we pull together the selections that we're going to use. And you'll see it all come together um, and exactly how what I'm talking about here, what I'm considering when I'm doing my selections here, when it pulls together with the artwork, when it pulls together with the colours of the cushions, down to the colours of the sofa and then the little elements that we have in the rugs, in all of the rooms, how it all flows together and it can make you not even realise the different colour palettes between the levels. So how far in advance do I make our selections? This is happening tomorrow and we're doing it today. So our standard, when I'm thinking about this, is we're actually pulling it together is the day before. However, in the back of my mind, Janessa and I start to consider the availability of selections that we have pretty much when a job, job locks in. So we make note if there's anything that needs to stay aside for us, if anything needs to be saved or bagged. Um, that, that sort of thing starts happening as soon as a job locks in but actually the finer details don't happen until we're a day out. So I can make sure I can make the best selections with the stock that we do have available. So that's, yeah, 24 hours is sort of standard for us. If I was coming to do selections for this property and I haven't seen the property and I'm wanting to familiarise myself with it, I would be looking at the images that we've been taking on Google Drive. So basically we go to a consult, upload all of those images to a file on Google Drive, and then that's available for everybody to then access and see. So we can have up to date, um, sized, well sized images. So if we take two angles of each space, so I know where the artwork needs to hang, I know sort of dimensions of the space, and then I can do my furniture selections. Because I did oh, my um, accessory selections. Because I did my furniture selections yesterday, I know exactly what I'm working with, so you won't see me referring to my phone. But often the girls are standing here looking and considering and then kind of taking and considering dimensions of rooms and things like that. So if I talk you through what I'm thinking, so basically we've got a um, combined dining living space. Um, in this space, we've got two beautiful side tables, <laughs> two table lamps the size of a mini human, and then a three-seater sofa, a nesting coffee table set, and two armchairs, and a big six-seater dining table. It borders out to beautiful um, French doors that open out to an um, outdoor space. So I need something with height, because I, as I come down my kitchen, I have a double height kitchen, like it's not, um, the kitchen island isn't waist height. It's one of the older school ones that have that little splashback up top. So I need something with height. Otherwise, when we walk in, we're not gonna have anything of visual interest to be able to see. So I need to go with height. Ooh. Something I sampled earlier. So something with height. So, and then something that is a blue gray color thing for me. That's something that's really important. So basically I'm gonna go with the blues. I should have prepared this a little bit earlier for myself, right? That would have been a lot easier. And then, so I'm doing my dining table, obviously. I need this. What I'm thinking when I'm doing this, I'm trying to style my centerpieces in, 
in what I call odd, everybody does it, not just me, odd groups. So odd styling numbers appeal a lot better than even, even just feels cluttered. Odd tends to um, arrange better. So one, two, three. So when I'm saying that, I've got something really high, medium height, low height, I have texture, I have color, and then my bases all work in with the colors that I've got going with um, the rest of the property. This spread is perfect for a 180 centimeter long dining table. So I, if, if it was smaller, I'd need, to, I'd need to downsize my spread. So this one's perfect for a six seater. So that's my dining table done. So I've got three coffee tables. So I wanna do them all different. Still working in with our color theme. For one of my coffee tables, one of my smaller nesting tables, again, three different heights, different colors, but all working in with the same sort of color scheme that we've got. I've gone with the horizontal spread because I know in this combined dining living, I'm gonna have my three seater sofa, side tables, coffee table and armchairs. So this is what we're gonna see when we walk in. So that's why I've gone with that feel. So that's one coffee table. I wanna bring a little bit of a softness to a different coffee table. So I've gone one with a tray again. So in, in a tray, you know, when we're using these smaller books, it's so that you don't have everything all black. This is going onto a darker color coffee table. So that's why I've gone with a book on the underneath. But so I've got one, two, three, but the whole purpose of the book in here for me is to help add the, the, the height difference. I've gone with simple florals. I don't, I don't like adding in magnolias or peonies or anything like that because in a, we're going quite trendy and contemporary in this house. So for me, those flowers don't quite fit the, the brief of the home. If it's going really classic, really formal, that's definitely where I'd be seeing those flowers. But for us, I like to go more like when it's trendy, sticking more to the greenery and simple um, spreads rather than going all out with the flowers. So that's coffee table number two. And then coffee table number three, actually something I didn't point out, gray, black, blue vase. Here, I'm gonna have my black and my blue on my beautiful coffee table books. Quite a large coffee table that's going downstairs. A nice big round one. So this is more my alfresco space. So I still have three books, one, two, three. Um, and I still have everything height wise, texture and color. So making sure they all flow. I can go, I can get away with extra height on this coffee table because it's it's a family living space. It, out, it's um, French doors to outside. It has an outdoor kitchen in this space. So this space is true Queenslander indoor outdoor living. There's no TV in this space. So this doesn't matter. Whereas at home in front of a TV, this is silly. So that's my three coffee tables. I have um, a console table and as well as a sideboard. So both of those, the console table is an optional. I might not get used. So I'm pulling out this green because I want to make sure the green that's on this one's different to the green that's on the dining table. It needs to be tall because it's going in this very tall vase. So just enough in there to make it feel full. This is just a thoroughfare space where this sideboard's going. So I've just got those two and then what they'll put on the other side of the console table will be those two and a candle. So high interest, we've got our it's a big wide console table with a big mirror in the middle. So I'm trying to frame the mirror. So this will go on one side. My next lot of height is here with an, another element. So it's one, two, three, not overdone, not overstyled. It's still very familiar to people because styling with the photo frames, everything like that. It's, it's going to feel homely. So that's my console. Greys, again, keeping in the same sort of colour scheme as the house so it all flows nicely. I've got a, an optional um, little uh, console table that's going into the alfresco living that I was just describing. I don't know if they're going to use it. I send it as a backup option. It's at the bottom of the stairs and I don't want you to feel when you're going down the stairs, I don't want to feel like you're coming up against a block. So that's why I say optional. It's there if they feel like the room needs more, but if it feels like you're going to block off the space and it doesn't work with the flow of the living, then it's scrapped and they don't use it. It's much easier to send extra stuff on the truck than it is for the truck to have to come back and take it back out there. So that's why we always send options. So I like this better because it's going in, it's going in the room that had these guys and that's just too much. So the spots with those, whereas this sort of works in the same sort of feel, but it's still working in the same sort of feel of the whole home. So that's why I've switched it. And again, I don't want to repeat what's on the other, other sideboards. So this one's going to be a little bit different. I have my coffee table books. I have like a, a little, thing and then I've got my vase that's got my flowers but that doesn't that's not enough it needs another little bit of height here I tried this one and he's far too little like it doesn't sit what nicely against the pyramid the apex 
right? So I want something that's taller. This is only minutely taller, but it works better as far as the height goes. It's still got the visual, like it's got a texture interest. It works in nicely with everything. It's a good size. Traditional study. So I'm just thinking, let's get some photo frames on there for them. I would like to see some books. This is our triple desk study. So it needs to have a fair amount of stuff on there. There's no PowerPoints there, so we can't put any desk lamps on. These are really cool, but I don't think, I don't feel like they're working with the rest of the house. These are too, too glam, too deco, so I'm not gonna use these ones. Then just a couple of little accessories. So basically, I'm just throwing, these ones are for my bedside tables. So I've just got some random accessories. I know these are gonna work really nicely with what we've chosen for the bedsides. Some greenery, succulent for one bedroom. Got five bedrooms going in. They're, whilst they're a good size, the bedside tables, they're not overly generous. So we're not gonna get too much, too many accessories on there um, without looking overdone. So we have four bathrooms. So again, we do a bit of a spread. Like we don't want them all to look the same. Send them a range of options. Then we have this one with some rolled up towels and then this guy here with, and that'll have some rolled up hand towels and then that'll go on top. That's for um, the top of the bath with some rolled up towels. So just making sure that all the bathrooms are different as well. The laundry we keep really simple, some greenery, some the washing detergent from a desk, and then we do a heap of towels. The kitchen space, whilst I'll pull a heap of stuff out for them, it really depends on how it sits best in the kitchen. So we don't want the greenery to overlap with the other greens. All of the colours that we choose, so we'll have grey tea towels, we'll have grey stripes on the bowls, we'll be incorporating elements that all that's throughout the rest of the house in the kitchen as well. So it flows nicely. Same as the outdoor. I look forward to show you tomorrow, but that's the accessories. So there you have it. There are two great examples of how we use accessories when staging a home for sale. We covered quite a bit in this one, but as always, if you do have any follow-up questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching Foxy TV and we will see you in the next episode.